in a pink stone here. So there's no more time to wait for something polished. There's no more time to pay attention to detail. <laughs> That's focusing on ego right there. I can't set up my YouTube channel until I can make it perfect, even though I have something really important to share. Hmm. So there's no more, uh, there's no more focus on that. I simply felt very called to make this very first video on my channel to, to tonight. It's actually the early, early morning. I awoke from very reflective dreaming, just like usual, since my awakening a couple of years ago. And the dreaming started just recently, <sighs> since I put certain substances down and said, thank you for serving me as long as you have, but you no longer do. And that, 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 was, that was simply that. No, this is bad, that is good. This, you know, nothing is good or bad or anything at all for everyone all the time. And that kind of leads me into what I need to share. It was a song that came up as I was sitting with my family in the living room in the evening time after dinner. And we, we watch music videos on YouTube. And my husband had a list of songs that he had compiled on, he scribbled on a piece of paper. We're kind of old fashioned, he and I. We only just got smartphones a little less than a year ago. We maintained our sacred space off of the grid for as long as we could. A whole decade while everyone else plugged in. And <laughs> we patted ourselves on the back for that. But now we're just as plugged in as anyone else. <laughs> Another bout with ego. We all have it. But the song Changes by Tupac came on and this one wasn't the the music video this one was one of the ones where it shows the lyrics and this is a song that I grew up listening to I was you know I, I remember when he died I don't remember how old I was but I remember hearing his music a lot and yet I had never listened to the words of that song it's funny um, <laughs> I talk with my husband about this too. A lot of, like, most songs, uh, unless I can read the words, they've always manifested as, like, light language to me. I don't really hear the words unless it's very enunciated and it's like, there's no question that that's what they're saying. A lot of hip-hop songs, um, things that are, you know music that it, it goes very quickly. I cannot discern the words from the music, the melody. And it's, so it's simply an energy that imbues my space. But I actually got to listen to the words in this song. And these lyrics stood out to me as the divine purpose that not just I am destined for, it is something that we all are destined for. There's not many blanket statements that I will make on this channel, but this one is true. It takes skill to be real, time to heal each other, change the way we eat, the way we live, the way we treat each other this permeated my very essence as 
something I was in awe of at how ahead of his time he really was. And he was here to teach us something and that's probably why he was killed. I don't focus on, on conspiracy theories as I like to call them. <laughs> I, um, that doesn't mean that I deny their existence. That doesn't mean that I deny the fact that there are people in very influential positions in this world, some of them human beings, some of them not. <laughs> I'm not going to define anything on this channel. I don't know all of the answers. I am a human being just like all of you watching. But in my orb of knowing, I realize that there are others in very influential places that harness and focus their energy towards malicious intent. And I'm not going to say they have more influence than I or you because all of us who know <laughs> who know like if we we are our own creators and we are able to harness the energy within us that can make the scalar jump and the scalar jump is something that Adam Pants taught me in his sacred teachings I will leave links to those in the comments section below. I really do urge you to listen to what he has to say. Um, he is no longer around. He's not dead, I don't believe. He's simply unplugged, and I understand why. Hmm? But back to the quote from the song Changes. I've been watching a lot of light workers, light bringers, do the incredible work that they do. I've been observing them for a couple of years now, and I have compiled many on a list of whom I deem as someone with something to offer. It's been an empty pursuit, though, and I've oftentimes wondered why. Because something was missing. Something is lacking. And that's not even me trying to judge them. That's simply me knowing something within my orb of knowing. And we all have that. Call it the collective consciousness. Call it your divine intuition. Call it your sixth sense. I call it my orb of knowing. I think of it as a crystal ball. Sometimes it's a hazy picture and sometimes it's it resonates very clearly within something that you know. It's kind of based on feeling, but not the kind of feeling of an emotion. It's, it falls into any one of those categories, clairvoyant, clairaudient, clairsentient, clair whatever, <laughs> you know? And I've experienced a few of these different um, sensational, hyper-sensational awareness perspectives, as I'm sure many of you have also. But my orb of knowing was ringing clear that so many of these light workers that I, I I've just noticed how just like I am a person 
who is not really known by anybody outside of my small community. They're, they're rooted in that ego that separates me from you. They're not really tapped into what or even really willing to be tapped into what comes next. It takes skill to be real. That is true. I think it takes a lot of practice, a lot of a lot of trial and error for all of us to be real about who we are, about what we're meant for. But most of us, if we shed that away, which is not truly us, that ego, and we look closely, we'll see that we're not fulfilling that which we're meant here to do. And that is rooted in some force of, of connectivity, some form of combining our orb of knowing with the orb of knowing of others. Time to heal each other. I know that we live in a money system. I know that we have to charge for our services. I understand all of these things. There's something about the focus of me and only me. And this and not that. And what is it that I am doing versus what is it that you are doing? All of these approaches are gravely incomplete and pointed in the wrong direction, if you ask me. And this goes for many light workers. I feel called to work with light workers. I don't feel called to do parlor tricks. I don't feel called to simply do readings for people to wow them with how much I can, you know, divine from their spiritual atmosphere. I don't feel called to make money in these ways. I do feel called to change the comfort level of my family, others as well, others who have touched me in amazing ways. I feel called to propel them forward into their own light, into that which they feel called to do. I feel called to create a bridge between you and me. I even want it to shift our language patterning from I feel called to, to we feel guided to. It's a paradigm shift and I feel it's upon us. I feel that it is imminent and there's many like movies and TV shows that allude to it oh what was that one uh, Wreck-It Ralph and Breaks the Internet this combining of force on a scalar level can be used for sinister purposes as well. Just like the virus in that movie. All of the little Ralphs combined together to create destruction. 
I can't help but think that that is kind of alluding to a foreshadowing of what all of this technology is kind of intending to do to us. But as above and so below, there are mirror images of the light and the dark sides and they, um, they reflect one another at any given point. So when the potential for anguish and wrongdoing and harnessing of others for sinister purposes is, is definitely innately like present in our current state of being, so too is an incredibly divine and connective purpose that we can all tap into to become like individual functioning selves of a beautiful and coherent and collaborative light body of awareness. And we have to take those, those next steps to do this. It's time to heal each other so that we can operate as one. Change the way we eat, live, and treat each other. <laughs> Just as the individual cells in our bodies must be provided with the fuel to survive that that nourishes them now i'm not going to get on here and talk about the vegan way of living i'm not going to talk about you know keto or any of these these like uh, you could call them cults you could call them fad diets i don't ascribe to any one way of being okay i don't i think that is part of the cancer it is part of the dividing force between us. And it's what starts us bickering. And it's what, um, it's what drives us further away from what we are meant to be. I will say that in my own experience, I have gained an incredible amount of clarity and a lightness to my spirit while undertaking a plant-based diet and lifestyle. Now plant-based, that does not mean go vegan all the time. Do I think that there are, you know, harnessed emotions in the flesh of beasts from these factory farms? Yeah, probably. I mean, energy doesn't just go away, right? It transfers itself from one to another. So when you kill that animal and it is afraid, resentful, or any of these other such things that the vegan movement will refer to, um, it probably doesn't go away. There is probably karma created there. It's not really something I want to focus on. What I want to focus on is harnessing that orb of knowing within yourself because then the decisions will come to you with ease as to how you need to be eating and what you need, how you need to be living and how you, not even, it, it's, it's beyond how you need to be doing anything. You simply do it. Because you are effortlessly dancing through life at that point. Whether you have money, whether you don't, you know you're doing what you need to be doing at this very moment. And if, you know, if you're shoving meat in your mouth and then you, like, want to feel bad about it later, like, that's, that's a lesson that you need to learn. 
It's a lesson that you needed at that time. Don't actually feel bad about it. Simply reflect and look into your orb. And know deep down that you are part of something greater. It's time to change the way we treat each other. And that goes for light workers too. I know you have to charge for your services. I know that you have to make a living just like the rest of us and that you have a divine essence of yourself to share. Light workers, I say this to you specifically, light workers and light bringers. Don't forget that you too are part of something greater and that the others that you serve, it's raining, it's bringing abundance, it's confirmation that this is the right way. Consult your orb of knowing, light workers, and do so with an open heart. Know that you're part of something greater and don't get so locked up into your own individual expression. Because what happens when the single cell gets so locked up into its own individual existence? cancer forms because it is no longer in unison in connective patterning and cohesion with the cells surrounding it. This is essential for ascension, folks. <sighs> 